In this video, we're going to look at Type on Path. Type on Path is a useful tool that allows you to write text that follows a curve rather than a straight horizontal line. It's good for certain designs where the text often follows a circular or elliptical path, for example, on labels and logos. We can start off by making a new document. For this example, it doesn't really matter what we choose, but we want to keep track of the units. So I'm going to use A4. Uh, I'm going to use uh, landscape, keep it in millimeters, and then click on create. The first thing I'm going to do is create two circles as guidelines. The easiest way to do that is to use the ellipse tool and then just click somewhere on the canvas and then write in the size of the, uh, the diameters of the ellipse. So um, we can actually lock these two together. And then for the outer circle, I want it to be 110 millimeters. And for the inner circle, I want uh, about 92, I think I measured it at. And now I'm going to just align these two. For this, I'm going to use the alignment tool that I can find in the options bar at the top here. I think you only see these if you're using a particular workspace and the workspace that I'm using is Essentials Classic. Otherwise, you can find them by going to Window and then Align. But I'm just going to use the ones in the option bar. So first of all, I'm going to horizontally align them and then I'm going to vertically align them. And then I'm going to just put this somewhere in the middle. Oh, snap to the middle there because I've got smart guidelines on. Um, I'm going to get rid of a fill. I don't want any fill. And for the outline, I guess we can use a different color than black. I'll use a blue color. Now the space between those two lines is going to be about eight millimeters which is the height the text needs to be, because the text I worked out is going to be about 36 points in size. For the text, I'm going to use Arial Black. So let's create some text first. We'll just write uh, a single word there. And then we, we can try 36 points, and we need to use Arial Black. And we can just see if this fits and you can see that it kind of fits in between those two guidelines so I know that this text is more or less the right size so that served its purpose we can delete that the next thing I'm going to do is make a copy of these two circles so I'm going to select them and use the alt key to generate a copy and then and go back to the originals and lock them using control 2. Finally, I'm going to place the copied circles over the top of the originals. Notice that I'm using smart guidelines when I do this type of work. That enables me to snap things to the centers of other things uh, and basically makes this work much easier. You may be wondering, why did I make a copy of the circle, lock the original, and then put this one on top? The reason for that is that when you use the type on a path tool, I can just do a quick demonstration here. Let's create a, a circle here. You can see that this has got a, an outline. When I use the type on a path tool on there, the outline disappears. It vanishes. And that's normally not a problem, but when you're trying to do text like what I'm doing here, it, you really want to be able to see um, where the top of the text is and where the bottom of the text is. You'll see why in a minute. One way you can always make sure that you can see the paths is to make a copy of them like this. Now I'm ready to write the text on the path. So I'm going to take the um, type on path tool and I'm going to write the text on this inner circle on the outside of it. When I click on it, it fills it with placeholder text, so we can just delete that. Uh, and then I'm going to write the text we want. I'm 
And then I'm going to take the direct selection tool. When the direct selection tool is active and the text is marked, you can see these control handles. And there are actually three. And they're a bit awkward to use, they're a bit fiddly to use, but these two here that are together mark the, the beginning and end of a text on the path. And you can see that the end is, um, yeah, we can move the end around. If I go there, then it will start chopping away at the text and the text will disappear. Um, so we've got that tool. And we've got the beginning one there. And then there's another one that's a bit hard to see, but it's just in between the B and the R there. I'm going to zoom in a bit so we can see that a little bit better. This tool here. This uh, determines, this is the center of a text, and we can use this to position the text uh, where we want it in the center, like that. And um, This is best done visually by eye, get the text looking right. And now that we've done that, we can move on to the text in the outer circle. So now I'm going to select the outer circle. I don't really have to select it, but I'm just marking it so that you can see that that's the one we're now focused on. I'm going to take the type on path tool and this time I'm going to click, I'm going to be careful to click on that outer circle. Now you can see that looks like a mess. So I'm immediately going to delete that and just write a simple, simple word there. Uh, like test, which is easier to see what's happening. Take the direct selection tool, and then we've got the usual tools again. We've got the start and the end. Uh, can just uh, maybe position that around there, and you can see that third tool there, which allows us to position um, the whole thing. And I'm just going to move that around till that's underneath. Now you can see that the text is on the outside of a circle; it's upside down. But I can also use this tool to drag it onto the inside of a circle so we can have it there. So we need to just change this to um, something else. Machine tools. There's not enough space for that so we'll have to move this one around a bit and this one that way a bit. Should appear any second now. There we go. And you can make any final adjustments again with this middle, if you can get to it, it's a bit awkward. I'll just zoom in a bit. With this middle tool here. And as I said, you really need to be able to do this by eye. You can see that this top one needs um, some further adjustment. I'll try zooming in a bit. So it's this handle here I want, and I just need to adjust it a little bit. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. That's fine. You can fiddle around with it all day, but um, visually it needs to look like this. And you can see why I had those two guidelines because if I take this text away from there now, you can see that those guidelines that I was using are still there. There aren't any uh, paths on the text that we can see. Okay, so the, um, the next stage then is to possibly group these two together. I've grouped the two, Control G, so that they behave as a single unit. I think I can get rid of these. Um, so we'll um, unlock those. Actually, what I could do is I could use this as a the basis of a graphic as a background. So probably by making this one a little bit smaller, let's make that a little bit smaller. I can just go into properties here and make that 10 millimeters smaller. And this outer one, we can make um, a little bit bigger, maybe. Uh, what was it? 110. Let's make it 120 then. I'm just guessing these values here. We'll add a bit of fill to those, doesn't matter what. And then we'll use the uh, Pathfinder to subtract the front so we make a hole in it. So I've made this graphic and then we can put this 
on top of that graphic there like this. Um, in the original image, I had a couple of uh, symbols here, so you can just create those by making some circles or whatnot. And again, you might want to group that with a text. So we have everything as a single unit. And then we can choose a color for, the, uh, for everything. And that's basically what we had at the start. Okay, so that's the end of the video. I hope you found that useful.